Today we are making some steak bites and basically all you need is a piece of steak. This is a tenderloin and you're gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces. I already have some cut up. They should look like this. And then there's like three other ingredients and you just put them in the air fryer. This is one of my favorite recipes that Whenever I'm cooking for Anna, I actually prefer to just do the steak bites because I'm scared I'll like undercook or overcook her steak. Um, half joking there, but so I just do the steak bites instead. And the best way to not overcook them is literally just five minutes in the air fryer, maybe six. But if you overcook them, they are not good. They're too chewy. So we've got some melted butter. Not a lot of melted butter either. What's up, Mac? What's up, Christy? What are your thoughts on red meat three days a week? So I don't believe that um, the hype around like you have to eat 17 servings of red meat a day or else you're gonna become a vegan and die. Like I think that a lot of people are kind of overcompensating for the demonization of red meat and eating like massive amounts of it, which I don't know how great that is. But I could eat a steak every day and feel amazing. I just don't know if you have to eat like 17 steaks a day, you know? So it just comes down to how do you feel? All right, and we're gonna add some Waukee Chester sauce. I don't think lean red meat or fatty red meat makes a difference. I think fatty cuts of meat are great for you. All right, so we're adding a little bit of Waukee Chester. Now these are the three seasonings you need, just salt, Yeah, Chris, steak is one of the best things ever. Not a whole lot of salt. A Little bit of garlic powder. This paired with the butter makes the steak bites really good. I find these, the garlic powder and butter are like the two most important things to make your steak bites taste really good. And then some pepper. How many carbs do you eat a day? I don't go over 25 net carbs a day if I'm like just starting out. So that was kind of my plan at the very beginning and it helped me lose 80 pounds. But at this point in my journey, I do get away with eating 30 or 40 net carbs a day because I'm lifting weights, I'm running, I'm uh, fat adapted, that makes a big difference. So if you're at the very beginning of your journey, 25 is the limit for everybody. But as you become fat adapted, as you oh, start doing some intense exercise, you can get away with more. Liz, you eat four ribeyes a week. Nice. I used to eat ribeyes all the time. And then recently I just realized I like filet so much more that I would rather eat an eight ounce filet and just have it with like, I mean, for some people, that's a good serving of protein for a meal. But, um, or like a six ounce filet, you know, I'd rather have less of that. And then just because I like the taste of it compared to a ribeye, which you could get maybe twice as much for the same price. All right, now we're going to add this to our air fryer, which I have an oven style air fryer. And I just touched the bottom of this with buttery hands. Hopefully I don't cause a fire. Some of these steak bites are pretty big like this is like a double steak bite my fave meal is a rare steak and kale salad nice i've i'm not into eating kale at, at one point i used to like when everybody was like raving about how good it is for you back in the day now people have other opinions about it um I would saute it with like salt and butter and I thought that was good. Or maybe it was coconut oil at the time. Whenever I first started keto, I was using coconut oil for so many things. At this point, I don't care. I've never had a London broil, Siobhan. Melissa, this is not grass fed. This is straight out of Walmart, which Walmart does have some grass fed meat though. All right, like I said, five, six minutes max. And I'm setting the timer just so that I don't forget. Okay. 
<clears throat> Let me rinse off my hands. Yeah, Samantha, shout out to Walmart. I love Walmart. We've been eating these ice cream sandwiches. I think I showed you guys the other day. They're the NYX brand. And usually I would just grocery shop at HEB, which is like Texas's Kroger or um, whatever you guys. Um, there's like other grocery stores that are like popular in each state, you know. And I would always go to HEB, but Walmart has these these sandwiches that are so good that have nine net carbs, which is pretty high. Uh, the temperature of the air fryer is 430. And I don't know why it's 430. I think my air fryer is just auto set to 430. Otherwise, I would have just sat it to 400. I'm going to say the thing is, I don't remember if the last time I did these for five minutes, if it was 400 or 430. So I was scared to correct it to 400. Also, I just have messy hands. But um, just do some experimenting. If, if 400 for five or six minutes makes them undercooked, then just put them back in for like two more minutes. I want to start keto again, but it's the most challenging thing to start. I'm such a carb lover. My best advice is to just find your favorite keto versions of whatever you're craving, like whether it's recipes or store-bought things, and just either batch make a whole bunch or like buy some, but you have to satisfy your cravings, you know, like if you start keto, my hands are so gross, I have to rinse them off, but if you start keto and all you do is just think about food that you can't eat, that you're not about to eat, and you don't even have like a keto version to satisfy that craving, you're gonna be miserable. And nobody, nobody in the world can succeed at something if it just makes them miserable, you know? This is, I just got the zero sugar lemonade and I've been filling it with water because I'm too lazy to dirty another cup. But like, the reason people fail at diets is because they don't enjoy them. So you have to figure out how to make keto enjoyable for you. And I would say that step comes a little later on because if nothing at all, if you like, if nothing at all is, um, is working and you just keep giving up, I would say don't jump straight into keto rather just like baby step your way into a lower carb lifestyle. A lot of people have success doing that. It's like, it's so it's so easy to compare yourself to someone like me or like someone who's done keto for several years. I've almost done keto for a decade. I've done keto for seven years um, in February. So it's like, for me, it's, it's pretty effortless to just stick to keto. But if I was at the beginning of my journey, I wouldn't hold myself to the same standard that I hold myself to now. When I first started my health journey, all I did to get on the right path was, you guys probably remember this from, I think I talked about this a few days ago. I just started putting blueberries in my frosted flakes, which isn't even a step towards eating less carbs. But to me, it was a step towards becoming a healthier person. And that identity shift is huge because if your entire day is just consists of you going to Wendy's and then McDonald's or you get a pint of Ben and Jerry's and like your identity is just, I'm the type of person who eats a pint of Ben and Jerry's before bed. Well, that identity can't exist at the same time as you're starting to believe that you're the type of person who makes healthy choices and whichever one you focus on is going to manifest more in your life. So make a healthy choice every day, even if it's like, I'm going to have 30 grams of protein with my breakfast and I can eat whatever I want the rest of the day. Once you start doing that, you start to choose to identify with that behavior. Like you are what you do. So if I put, if I go out of my way to make my breakfast more healthy than it usually is, then I start to become a healthier person. And then as you do that with two meals a day, three meals a day, your, your identity changes so much that it's actually easier to stick to something like keto where you're not going over 25 carbs a day. It, it comes down to changing what you believe about yourself. When I was like 17, I watched this documentary called The Secret, which has a ton of BS, by the way, but it has some good stuff you can take away from it. And, uh, 
And the main thing was like, my whole life I was just pessimistic. I never expected anything, so I was never disappointed. And then I watched The Secret and I started writing all these like goal lists and none of them came true. I was like trying to manifest this life and none of it really came true, but a lot of it did benefit me later on in life where I was like, I had made the shift from super pessimistic, never expecting anything to, all right, I believe I can do anything. And then like, you just want to, you just want to accept that a lot of the outcome of your life is due to your belief, not all of it. Like if a meteor hits your house, you can't really control that. But the amount of effort you put into something if you believe you're going to succeed at it is going to be higher than the amount of effort you would put in if you believe you're going to fail because why would you try at all? All right, these have 55 seconds left. And my new book that's coming out talks a lot about the baby steps, uh, Carefree Keto. But Breaking Up With Carbs, the one that's on Amazon right now, also has a lot of stuff like that in it too. I'm glad you guys are finding the message inspirational. That is, I wish somebody would have told me these things like just earlier, you know? All right, we're gonna take these out. 20 seconds left. I need my oven mitts. I have one. I need both of them. And I need this tray. What seasoning? Salt, pepper, garlic powder. And we also did some... Uh, some walkie chester sauce and melted butter. All right, I'm moving. Oh, I made some muffins, I'll show them to you guys. I'm moving these out of the way right now. I just need this little tray. I'll show you a muffin. It's kind of squished now. So I made a recipe video for these today. Mm, they smelled so freaking good. I'm going to get your books. Hey, thank you so much. Like I said, Breaking Up With Cards is already out on Amazon. All right, I really hope this is going to burn. Six minutes. If they burnt in six minutes, you guys should try four. I don't think they did. There's no way they burned. Oh, I'm so excited. And this is great timing because I can hear Anna walking around. So I think she just put Sophia to bed. I can actually see if she put Sophia to bed with the iPad. Oh, oh she's waving her arms around. She's awake. She did not go to sleep. <laughs> oh, wow. It looks like Anna put her to bed 20 minutes ago. She's not happy. All right. We have to let these, I don't know if you have to let them rest for a whole 10 minutes because it's a steak bite. Like, but look at the butter just dripping off. Mm. Because this is already like a tender cut of steak. I bought your first book waiting on your next book to buy. I can't wait. Hey, thank you so much. K Ferns, usually I do go, like uh, a few nights ago, uh, a few nights ago, Sophia started crying and I did go in there and I just patted her belly and let her calm herself down and she went right to sleep. But then I like sat on the floor and listened to an audiobook for a few minutes with my headphones because I didn't want to disturb her like wait, opening the door or anything. So like I patted her belly and then I just sat on the floor for a few minutes. It's really nice. Like because we didn't get a uh, like a super bad sleeper, it's it's kind of relaxing to just go in there at night. Like I can choose to be frustrated about it, but then I just remember how blessed we are, how good of a sleeper she is. And it it's kind of relaxing to go in there. Her nursery is just, it has this like soothing vibe to it. 
What cut of meat is that? It is tenderloin. I'm reading your books right now. Oh, let's get it. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to put these on a plate and we're going to take a picture. You could probably dip these in something. We have a super loud sound machine, Amanda. I think those things are why she's such a good sleeper. Because we did, like, that was our main goal, was to make sure we did everything in the sleep department right. And so many people do, and then their babies are just, they have trouble sleeping, so... It's just kind of a luck of the draw, I feel like. Alright. Ooh, this one piece, you can see. I'll show you guys the middle of them when I take a bite. I'm just letting, like I said, I don't know how long you have to let them rest if their steak bites, right, compared to, oh, blue cheese, yummy, yum, Mac. This tiny piece, I'll just eat. Oh my God. The butter, you, the flavor of the butter on these steak bites, is such a game changer. Let's just take a little picture. Uh, we'll probably eat it with some vegetables. I think we have some Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna see what Anna's in the mood for. It's hard to get a good picture of steak bites. I'll sprinkle some parsley on top. You make these all the time, K Ferns. A hey, shout out to Austin Jarbo, one of my OG friends from like before the keto snacks existed. All right. We are putting some parsley on top, just to make the picture look nicer. I'm like not doing a good job tearing it up though, because Eric, I've had steak in restaurant covered in blue cheese. It was scrumptious. Ooh. Mac, you're going to make me try this. All I have is blue cheese crumbles. I don't have blue cheese dipping sauce. Hey, I love you too, Jarbo. All right, guys, let's take a picture of this. Man, there's it, the lighting just sucks. It's like, when you take pictures of dark things, oh, uh, you guys can see Anna comforting Sophia. She probably wouldn't want me to show. Uh, Anna's like in the frame, so I, I'm not gonna show because she would not like that, but um, Anna went over to Sophia and is comforting her. Oh yeah, that looks better. Just adding a little bit of green. All right, right, let's. I'll show you guys the middle of these. You guys are saying put the blue cheese crumbles on top. All right, let's do it. Mm. Shout out to Matt for giving us this idea. Oh, melt them on the stove with some heavy cream. Yo, this is blue. Is that normal? When is this expiration date? There is no expiration date. We're just gonna have to put our faith in the Lord.
I've done this with grated Parmesan on top. Oh yeah, I guess if it's called blue cheese, it should be blue. Ooh, this looks so good. This picture looks way better with the blue cheese. Yummy, yummy, okay. This one piece just looks off. Ooh, perfect, all right, let's take a bite. Oh my God. It's so tender. Mm. It's so good. I guess it's called tenderloin for a reason, but wow. This is the piece I've been eyeing. You can see there's some red. Perfect. This is perfect. I wish the camera would focus better. Doesn't that just look perfect? Six minutes at 4.30, Nick. Mm. Oh, thank you, John. I will check them out. This is so good. Mm. So if you make a batch of them and eat them during the week, I can't even talk because they taste so good. I don't know how good they would be reheated. I don't know if it would overcook them. I would maybe do like three minutes in the air fryer or just prepare the, because they do five minutes in the air fryer, just prepare your steak bites, right? In Tupperware, get all kinds of cuts of steak. Shake them up in Tupperware with the Waukee Chester and all of the seasonings and maybe even freeze them. I don't know, like, or just like, I don't know how long they would last in that marinade, but I can't say for sure how I would go about doing like a big batch of these, but I think that you could um, figure out a way, maybe freezing them, I'm not sure. But all right, guys, I love you. I believe in you. I will see you tomorrow. Mm. So perfect.